and welcome to Amy Nicole Studio uh, 2019. This is my first video of 2019 and I am so excited to be back in action and here making another video for you guys. Um, I have a lot in store for 2019 but <laughs> Buttons is excited to be back too. I have a lot in store here in the studio for 2019 some more patterns coming out, um, some more tutorials, of course more this week in the studio videos for you, blog posts. I still have some things I made in 2018 that I have yet to vlog or blog about. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. Can you calm down please? I need you to calm down. But today I want to talk to you guys a bit about my plans for 2019 um, in the new year, what I am hoping, not specifically to sew, I did do a make nine, I'm going to go over that with you guys next week actually, but this week I want to talk to you about a project I'm launching, implementing, challenging myself to do called the year of slow sewing and this is something that I've been thinking about a lot as I was finishing up a lot of my makes last year so it got to the point where I was just checking things off my list I had a list of a project I wanted to sew every month that I made at the beginning of the year and I I'm super happy with everything I made last year, but it just, toward the end of the year, it just kind of felt like, okay, check next, check next, check next, and I wasn't really intuitively, like, necessarily making what I wanted to make or felt like making. I was buying fabric and sales and um, just not really thinking a lot about what exactly I needed. Um, what I wanted to be sewing and getting really caught up in a lot of that kind of stuff and just kind of feeling like I was finishing projects just for the sake of finishing them because I said I was that that's what I was going to do whether or not I still wanted to make that or not. Um, granted, I am super happy with everything I made in 2018. Um, but it just got me thinking about the way I plan my projects how I go about sticking to those plans and what um, what my planning process that the way my planning process makes me feel and in a way it kind of took the fun out of sewing for myself because I just felt like I was checking off my to-do list and when I sew for work that's what I'm doing so I don't want to do that when I'm sewing for myself. So I decided to really think about it. I've also, you guys know, I'm super interested in uh, sustainable fashion. Um, that's already something that's very much on my radar. So I decided to next, this year, start a new challenge for myself called the year of slow sewing. And that is going to be a hashtag, hashtag the year of slow sewing. Um, so this could mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but for me, I'm going to tell you what that means. First and foremost, number one, I will be sewing exclusively from my stash for the entire year of 2019. I'm very excited about this part of the project. I have so much fabric in my stash and I'm really looking, I have a lot of ideas for a lot of the fabric that's in my stash, so I'm really looking forward to getting to implement those ideas and sew through my stash. I have beautiful fabrics that are just dying to be used and made into something wonderful, so I can't wait to do that. Um, now I will say that there are going to be a couple exceptions. One, I'm not cheating already, don't don't at me, okay? The first exception is um, sewing samples for new patterns. So when I make my samples for a new pattern, I try to stick to a specific color story. I try to keep the colors on, on brand. And a lot of times the fabric needs to be very pattern specific. It needs to be something that is... Um, 
a t uh, hmm, what's the word? It needs to be something that is applicable to that pattern and it needs to be oftentimes a certain amount of yardage and that kind of stuff so I don't want to limit myself um, for that. So this is more my personal sewing. Um, as far as business sewing goes, there will be times when I need to get fabric for samples for my pattern. So that is exception number one. Exception number two. If I decide to make a swimsuit this year, which I usually make one every year, so hopefully I'm, I'm, I have one in mind for next year. There's one on my Make 9. or the, I keep saying next year. This year. Um, there's one on my Make 9, but I don't have any swimsuit fabric on hand. So that will be one exception. I do want to try and source that swimsuit fabric um, in a sustainable way. So I want to try to find either something organic or... Um, printed in the U.S., milled in the U.S., uh, any kind of, you know, Ecotech certified, something like that, that is at least uh, responsible in some form or fashion. So those are my only two exceptions to my fabric sash only sewing for 2019. Other than that, um, it's going to be fabric sash only. Um, so I feel good about it because a lot of, like I said, the fabrics I have in my sash, I already have ideas and plans for, and I have enough, honestly, to do this for the next two years, <laughs> because I'm crazy. Um, so uh, that is number one, um, sewing exclusively from my stash for the year of so slow sewing. Number two, no set schedule. So I um, usually pick a project for each month at the beginning of the year. I say I'm going to sew this in Jan January, this in February, this in March, etc. Um, this year I just want to kind of go by feel. I have a list of things I want to make um, and things that are kind of on my radar. I did make a make nine um, but I'm not holding myself to that make nine. I'm thinking of it more as a inspiration board, um, some, like I said, projects that have been on my mind, projects I know I have fabric for, um, things like that. Um, so no set schedule that is holding me to a, um, a certain standard that I need to get this, this, and this finished each month. None of that in 2019. Um, number three, I want to experiment more with using my fabric scraps. I keep a lot of my scraps, except for the ones that are super, super tiny and I can't do anything with. So I have a bin that is literally overflowing with fabric scraps that I want to, I have some really fun ideas. I'm not going to tell you all of them right now, but I want to really experiment um, with implementing my fabric sat scraps more in my garment sewing, um, doing some fun small projects with them, and of course I'll be sure to share all of this with you. So that is number three, experimenting more with fabric scraps. Um, number four, I want to challenge myself to add more intricate details with my garments to really slow down and see like how can I make this more special. I love embroidery and um, contrast little details stuff like that I love when I see details like that in other people's clothes <clears throat> in designers clothes but I never take the time to do stuff like that when I'm making clothes for myself because I always feel like I'm in such a rush for some reason so um that is number four is experiment with adding seeing taking like the project I'm going to start on see how I can add um, slow down and add something a little more special to it. Um, number five, I am, this is actually a knot, I am not going to limit myself just to patterns in my stash. I do have some things in mind that are patterns I already have. Um, this is something that you could do if you wanted to follow along with this challenge. More on that later. Um, sewing patterns from your stash is a form of slow sewing because you're not printing out 
um, extra patterns or using the paper. Um, you can, and it's also a way to save money. Um, I'm not going to do that. I am just not the kind of person that sews from the same, with a few exceptions, hashtag Ogden Cami. I'm not the kind of person that sews from the same pattern over and over again. So I, I like to try out different people's patterns and see, like as a pattern designer myself, it's quite um, fun and informative for me to see what other people are doing in the industry. So um, I am not going to limit myself to uh, only patterns in my stash, but that is something you could do. So um, number six, uh, this one is maybe going to be tricky. Not really. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to be ignoring garment specific sewing challenges. So, you know, those ones where it's like, hey, everyone, this month we're all making this dress, or this month um, we're all going to make pants, or that kind of thing. Um, of course, we'll be participating in things like Me Made May and the Restyling Exchange that are more broad, and hello, Restyling is slow sewing anyways. So um, I'll be participating in stuff like that, but I will be ignoring anything, any challenge that is super garment specific. Um, and that is it. So there are six uh, elements for my year of slow sewing for me. Um, number one, I'm sewing only from my stash. Number two, I'm not setting any specific schedule deadlines or goals. Um, number three, I'm going to experiment more with using my fabric scraps. Number four, I'm going to experiment more with adding intricate details into my garments, slowing down, being more mindful, um, taking the time to do stuff like that. Uh, number five, I will not be eliminating um, new patterns from this challenge. I will be sewing both patterns in my stash and new patterns that I don't have yet. And number six, I'm going to be ignoring any garment-specific sewing challenges. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is hashtag the year of slow sewing. Now, I would love for you to join me. Um, you, this is so loosey-goosey. This is something that I want to do on my own. And I just wanted to put it out there in case, just to A, spread the word, and B, if somebody else was feeling a little lackluster about their constant production of garments and wanted to maybe join me on this journey so you can join in too. You don't have to follow these specific rules. You can make up your own rules. It's not a big deal. If you want to only sew patterns from your stash and that's all you're going to do for slow sewing, awesome. If you want to do something crazy like me and only sew from your fabric stash from a year, even better. Um, it's going to look different for everybody, but I would love, love, love for you to join me. Um, of course, in order to do that, just say you're doing it. Post a blog post uh, or an Instagram post about what the year of slow sewing means for you. Be sure to use the hashtag, uh, hashtag the year of slow sewing. If you subscribe to my newsletter, I will be sharing every month, it's a monthly newsletter, I will be sharing a tip for slow sewing in each of my newsletters. Um, so that's just going to be something that you can do to make a small change in your sewing practice to be more sustainably minded. And if you don't follow me, or follow me, subscribe to my newsletter, you can do so by clicking uh, the link below in the show notes. Is that what it's called on YouTube? I don't know. Um, and I would love, love, love to have you. Plus you'll get a free pattern. It's awesome. Um, so if you choose to join me, um, like I said, this can look however you want it to look. You can buy only secondhand fabric. You can not buy any fabric. You can just sew patterns from your stash. How just in general, be more mindful about what you're going to sew anything like that. If you'd love to join me, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to post about it. If you have a blog, maybe write um, how the, the year of slow sewing is going to look for you. Um, tag me on Instagram. You can do an Instagram post about it. Don't forget the hashtag, hashtag the year of slow sewing. And I just can't wait to see how this project, I don't think 
I want to call it a challenge. I think I'm going to call it a project. Um, how this project looks throughout the year, um, how my mindset changes towards my sewing practice, and what kind of things I produce within these parameters that I've set for myself. So um, I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me in another year of the Amy Nicole Studio YouTube channel. I cannot wait to show you guys everything I have in mind for 2019. Um, next week, join me. I will be talking about my Make 9. And um, again, these are just guidelines, things I've had on my mind. I might not make all of that. and Or I might make one or two and then make five other things on my Make 9. It doesn't matter. That's okay. So um, that's my approach for 2019. It's okay. It doesn't matter. So what you want. So um, join me next week when I will be talking about my Make 9. I hope everyone had an amazing holiday and New Year celebration. I It took me a while to get back in the groove of work and life and all that kind of stuff. But I am back now and I'm really looking forward to... Um, everything that 2019 has to offer and I'm so grateful that you are joining me on this journey. So thank you so much. As always, comment below, subscribe, share this video with a friend if you think they would be interested and happy sewing. Bye!